Hello, and welcome to today's Elaine A. Powers Reptile Side Chats. Today we're going to discuss the most asked question that I've encountered as a person involved with iguana research and conservation and rescue and adoption programs. So today we're going to discuss how you tell a male green iguana from a female green iguana. Now, when I had my rescue back in New Jersey, I would get calls from New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Delaware about people needing to uh, have their iguana rescued or they'd found an iguana that needed a rescue and um, they would call me up and if I had space, I would always take in the iguana, um, especially if its life was in danger. So every year come December, I'd have 26, 27 green iguanas in my house. Fortunately, I was able to place most of them to, to good homes uh, that had been thoroughly vetted before they had adopted a, an iguana because it, it's not a pet for everyone. So there's one rescue in Pennsylvania would call me up and say, oh, we have a female iguana to be rescued. And invariably, if they said it was a female iguana, it was a male iguana. If they said they had a male iguana that needed to be adopted, invariably, it was a female iguana. And it got to be a running joke where they, I'd say, okay, sex the iguana and then put it down as the opposite. Um, not sure why they had this difficulty, uh, but it was amusing. So today we're going to learn some of the ways you can tell the differences between iguanas. And you know, it's a little more subtle uh, than you might think. Uh, but um, so I have two not quite willing participants to, to share with you today. So uh, this could be an interesting broadcast. So this is Calliope. She is a female green iguana species iguana iguana and um, a lot of people come up to me and say oh my iguana is a male because he's so big well that's not a good way to sex an iguana the biggest iguana I ever had in my home was a female and she was actually 18 pounds uh, just under six feet and she was a pound heavier than the largest male green iguana I ever had in my house. So uh, size is not the way to do it. Uh, people often say, well, okay, head shape and the jowls. The jowls are the, the part of this side here um, that has the subtympanic scale or, or the jewel, um, the characteristic of a green iguana. But that's not always accurate as well. Sure, some males have really pronounced jowls um, that make it, makes it kind of obvious, but some of the subdominant males and the females just have these jowls that are not really that prominent or they're a little little puffy, um, but also not a good way to tell a green iguana sex. So what are the ways, Elaine? Well, the surest way is the femoral pores. Now the femoral pores are a line of pores on the inside of the legs. And hopefully you can get closer to see them. But you see that little line of dots on the inside of her legs? Those are the femoral pores. Uh -huh. And in females, they're actually kind of small, so they're kind of hard to see. But you see those, those little dots? Those are the femoral pores. And you'll see how you can tell the difference when I bring out the male. So on females, they're small. They look like little flowerets. Um, that you would draw if you were uh, artistically inclined. The another way, uh, another thing that is missing on her are the hemipene bulges. So just beneath her cloaca, if she was a male, she'd have two bulges. And sometimes they're prominent, uh, sometimes they're not. But that's another way that you can reassure yourself uh, that it's uh, a male and not a female. Females have a nice, smooth, gradually uh, getting thinner tail that runs down. So I don't know if she's gonna let me show that to you one more time or not, but we'll see. Okay, so you see mm -hmm. nice 
even tail going down, uh, no bulges on there. And you can see those femoral pores. All right. So I'm going to set her aside. Oh, she, she, she may make a break for it, actually. Oh, or, okay. And hopefully she'll hang out so she can come back and visit. So now I'm going to get the equally um, uncooperative mail out. And uh, this is Chili, Chili Chestnut that you uh, might have met on an earlier episode. And uh, so I'm going to, yep, there he is. He's not really a happy camper. I've put him in a bag. Uh, that's often how you restrain green iguanas in the field, or actually iguanas in the field. So you put them in these bags, and then you can reach in, grab them, so that you have a good hold on them, and then hopefully pull the bag off. Oh, so that actually went reasonably well. Yes, and as you can see, he's not real happy about this, but hopefully we can get him to calm down a bit. There we go. Okay, now. All right, now if you look at his femoral pores, you see that they're much bigger. Let's see, which way do I go? And they seem to have a white paste in them. And this actually is a white paste. That's the pheromones that the male iguanas exude so that they can do several things. One is mark their territory. So as they're walking along the branches, they'll rub their uh, base of their legs on the branches and that says, hey, there's a big macho iguana here. So other males stay out, females come and visit. Um, so that's how they mark their territories. And this is, so it's usually the most obvious way, but you know, once again, it, it's not always definitive. So um, unfortunately, you, know, you notice that he's got a smushed nose. He's um, disagreed with being collected for today's talk. So he unfortunately smashed his nose as I was trying to grab him. All right, but another, the other way is, and hopefully you can see them, is if you look at underneath his cloaca, right there at the tip of my uh, glove, is you'll see there are two bulges. And these are where the hemipenes are kept. Yes, iguanas have two penises. And it, uh, they do that because the male will get on top of the female, bite her neck, and then maneuver his hips mm -hmm. under hers. So he's got to be able to insert a hemipene uh, depending on which side of the female that he has managed uh, to get coordinated with. So they have two of them, and that's why they have the two bulges. Now, oftentimes when you're holding a male iguana, he may flash at you which means that he shows his hemipenes a bit, and that's also a surefire way to know that you have a male. Uh, in the field, researchers can measure these hemipenes just to confirm if it's a male or a female. If it's a female, uh, the little areas in the cloaca are very short. In males, of course, because of the hemipenes there, they're rather deep, and so they, you can confirm that you do have a male. So. Are you calming down a bit? Just a little bit. You can notice he does have l little jowls, but you know it's not much more prominent than what you saw in the female. Now a lot of people get a baby green iguana and go, oh, you know, I don't know what I have. You know, is it a male or a female? Unfortunately, you have to wait until green iguanas are sexually mature to be able to definitively sex them, and that's usually at about two years. Um, by then, the iguana should be between three and five feet long, and they should reach their full length of six feet with, uh, within five years or so. So these are not small pets. Uh, Chili here is a youngster, so he's still mm -hmm. growing um, and getting longer, and pretty soon all the girls will be looking at him. Uh, another definitive way to sex a female iguana is if she lays eggs. I actually rescued an iguana from a woman who, as we were standing there watching her iguana lay eggs, stated that it was a male. She was sure it was a male iguana. Uh, let me assure you, 
males of any species do not lay eggs. Now, they may incubate them like seahorses and some toads, uh, but they don't lay the eggs. Um, only females make those. So, just a reminder, if you're looking at your iguana, look for the femoral pores along the inside of the legs. Look for the hemipene bulges or the lack thereof. And that way you'll know if you have a male or a female iguana. That's all for today's reptile side chat. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed meeting a couple of green iguanas, even though Chili's a red morph. And I look forward to talking to you again on the next Elaine A. Powers Reptile Side Chat. Remember to check out the workbooks and activity sheets on lyricpower.net and sign up for my newsletter on elaineapowers.com. Thank you, and until next time, happy iguana. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and share, and subscribe. Every time you comment or share one of my videos, it helps me make more videos. And the more videos I make, the more people we reach. And the more people who know about reptiles, the more they'll want to protect them. It's a win-win.